You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. everyone. Welcome back to our Teach Me the Bible podcast. My name is Tim Webb. I'm here with our teacher, David Klingler. And David, before we we begin, I want to remind our listeners that they have a weekly study guide. Uh, if they're, it's available through the app and the website. And uh, also, Monday through Friday, we have exclusive daily devotionals that if they'll go in and uh, into the teachmethebiblepodcast.com, sign in with their email, uh, we will then send them those study notes and uh, those daily devotionals as well. So I just want to encourage them to check that out. And again, our goal is to encourage everyone Monday through Friday, through the week, but we never want to take away from the local church. So I know we have some local pastors that join in with us, and and I just want to encourage everyone, do not forsake the assembling together, uh, as is the habit of some. We want to encourage everyone to be involved with the local church. We want to undergird what the church is doing and also encourage pastors. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are members of the body Body. of Christ, and Mm -hmm. when the body assembles, uh, the members need to be there. That's right. Right. You, You can't have a um, meeting of the body, mm-hmm. and the foot says, I'm going to stay in bed today. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> That's not it doesn't it work very well. Right? No. Uh, and so the body works yeah. well when all members of the body right. are, are present. But I think in these days and times, we need to encourage the body to get back together. Absolutely. Don't live in fear. Absolutely. Don't live no in fear. Question. We know, we know no the question. end of the story. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. So today, we're uh, continuing the conversation. We were in Chapter 6 last week. And so we're, uh, we were, you were very clear on what Paul is doing in this judging inside the church. So now, uh, as you said last week, if you take chapter seven in isolation, it can be very difficult. Absolutely. So can. what's the context here as he's moving through this? Yes. Yeah, so Paul has, uh, is, is being examined. Uh, mm-hmm. and that's the, that's the wording that, uh, is uh, the new American mm-hmm. standard, I think actually, uh, uses or, uh, may in chapter, uh, two, Back in chapter mm-hmm. 2, it says, The natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. This is 2.14. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For he cannot understand them because they are spiritually examined. They're spiritually appraised is how the New American Standard translates uh, this. And uh, what, whatever mm-hmm. your your translation is doing there, I want you to attach the examining or appraising word that is in chapter 2 uh, with what is going on in uh, in chapters seven, eight, nine, um, uh, nine, three, my defense to those who examine me is this, right? Mm-hmm. And so Paul's under examination. They're judging mm-hmm. Paul. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we talked about last week, Paul's defense is, you're judging me. You can't even judge yourself. Uh, you're, you know, you're dragging each other to court and all this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so you need to be able to judge by the correct standard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you're not judging yourself. There's I've told you to not associate with the immoral man in your midst. You can't seem to follow that one, <clears throat> but right. you're dragging each other to uh, to court. Uh, and so uh, you are to judge correctly and rightly in the body. Mm-hmm. Now, he's given them how that judgment is to operate in the body and how they're going to be judged mm-hmm. uh, in, the, in the body back uh, all the way back in the— uh, uh, in chapter uh, chapter two, because uh, and then again uh, in chapter four, uh, because uh, in chapter four, for example, verse three says, mm-hmm. "To me, it's a very small thing to be examined by you, mm-hmm. or, or any mm-hmm. human court." Yeah. Now, here's the problem: <laughs> is that they can't judge him correctly, and they're they can't judge themselves directly, and then they're hauling each other into human court um, in front right. of the unrighteous. And it, the irony is so mm-hmm. so thick here. He says, uh, "I don't even." examine or uh, evaluate, judge myself, uh, for I'm conscious against nothing against myself, but by that I'm not acquitted. The one who examines me is the Lord. Therefore, Mm -hmm. do not go on passing judgment before the time, uh, but wait until the Lord comes who will bring to light both the hidden things in the darkness and disclose, and here it is, disclose the motives of men's heart. Mm -hmm. And then each man's praise will come to him from God. And so Mm -hmm. 
the motive of your heart is important. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul's going to explain uh, everything he's doing, the motive of his heart is to build up the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So uh, in chapter 7, now concerning the things about which you wrote, they're they're saying, explain yourself here, Paul. Right. it is good for a man not to touch a woman, but because of immoralities. Now, the immoralities is what he's just talked about b- before. You yeah, know, like, you know yeah. Uh, one man, one woman in the body, mm-hmm. that's good. Mm-hmm. But a man who's uh, running around to the harlots, that's not good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, each uh, man is to have his own wife, and each woman is to have her own husband. Let the husband fulfill his duty to the wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband. And likewise, the husband also does not have authority over his own body, but the wife. Stop depriving one another, except by agreement for a time, that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together, lest Satan tempt you because of your Lack of self control, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, what would it look like for Satan to tempt them? Well, they'd go and they'd attach themselves to, to harlots harlot. and a, a mm-hmm. adultery and mm-hmm. you know sexual immorality. Right. And when they're doing that, they'd be a, a, attaching not only themselves to those things, but the body of Christ mm-hmm. to those things, mm-hmm. and and that would not be good. Uh, verse six. So he says, "But I say this by way of concession, not command." Uh, in other words. <clears throat> Remember, he's introduced this section, all things are lawful for me, but mm-hmm. not in all things are profitable, right. right? So what's law? Is it lawful for Paul to have a wife? Of course it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it profitable for the body for Paul to have a wife? Well, uh, I don't know that it's profitable, but it's certainly not tearing down the body if Paul has, in other words, mm-hmm. if uh, if Paul has uh, had, uh, lacks self-control or um, you know, if he can't operate by himself, but mm-hmm. he's given to sexual Temptation. desire, mm-hmm. uh, then it, he needs to have a yep, wife, exactly. lest he be tempted by mm-hmm. Satan, uh, and uh, and then attach the body of Christ mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to immorality to the harlot. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, he's saying all things being equal, and he's going to explain this. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, if I don't have a wife. I can fully devote myself to building up the body of Christ. If I have a wife, then you can spend time I have a responsibility mm-hmm. to a her duty. and her to me, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and so it's better for the building up of the body if you don't have a wife, uh, if that's possible. If that's not possible, then, you know, it's still mm-hmm. it's lawful. Mm-hmm. It's lawful for me mm-hmm. to have a wife. And Paul's going to sure. continue this discussion all the way through chapter 9. Uh, I, am I not free? This is what he says in chapter mm-hmm. 9. Am mm-hmm. I not an apostle? Mm-hmm. Have I not seen the Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If others are, um, uh, if to others I'm not an apostle, at least I am to you, for you uh, are my seal of apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Do we not have the right to eat and drink? He's mm-hmm. going to talk about mm-hmm. this. Um, do we not have the right to take a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles, right? right? So mm-hmm. he's answering why he's doing what he's, he's doing, doing, and this yes. is his explanation, right? Sure. So um, uh, back to uh, to chapter 7, mm-hmm. uh, I wish that all men were even as I myself was. However, each man has his own gift from God, one in this man and the other in that. He's going to talk about the gifts from God in chapter 12, and his mm-hmm. gift is apostleship, and he wants mm-hmm. to wholly devote himself Focus to the on Lord. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. Why is it good? Because they can wholly devote themselves to the building up of the body. Mm -hmm. But if they do not have self-control, let them marry. For it is better for them to marry than to burn with uh, desire. uh, and, And when they burn with desire... They leave themselves susceptibly tempted by Satan uh, Mm -hmm. because of their self-control. And then uh, how that's going to end is attaching the body of Christ to the harlot and to Mm -hmm. immorality, and that's not good. Right. But to the married, verse 10, I give instructions, uh, not I but the Lord, that the wife should not leave her husband. But if she does leave, let her remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and the husband should not send his wife away. Uh, Why not? Because... Marriage is to represent Christ's relationship, covenant uh, relationship to his uh, wife, to to the bride, Mm -hmm. which is the church. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But to the rest, verse 12, I, I say, uh, not the Lord, that if uh, any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, let him not send her away. Okay, why is he saying this? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so a brother has a wife who's an unbeliever and she consents to live with him. He shall not send her away. Why not? Well, because his desire is to win to her, bring over. her over. Yeah, yeah. To, to win to her, her over. over. Mm-hmm. And the woman who has an unbelieving husband, if he consents to live with her, shall not send her husband away. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified through the wife, and the wife is sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children are unclean, but now they are holy. Now, of the verses that I find um, most difficult, particularly for our American individualistic theology, I think this is one. Mm. Um, there are many explanations for this, and so uh, let me give you kind of my thoughts. Uh, okay. I, I, let me go with Paul, right? Uh, I say this by way of concession, not, not by the command, Lord. Right? This is not the, <laughs> the Lord, Lord speaking. speaking. Uh, this is just how I'm trying yeah. to uh, trying to think to, through to think through this saying. and put mm-hmm. this uh, t- mm-hmm. together. And and there is <clears throat> for those of uh, uh, in our uh, listening audience who are from. Uh, Denominations uh, where they have like Lutherans or confirmation Covenant that theology, type of thing, yeah. Background um, that there is a um, age of accountability, and this mm-hmm. this doesn't just drop out of the sky in the early church, but this actually comes out of the Old Testament, um, even mm-hmm. in the Exodus, right? So, mm-hmm. so the first generation comes out, uh, they rebel against the Lord, and so everyone who is twenty years old and mm-hmm. older is mm-hmm. wiped out. Right. The younger generation is not. Um, uh, you have indication of this uh, in uh, even in the book of Isaiah, um, uh, in Isaiah chapter seven. Before uh, they're old enough to know good and evil, right? Mm-hmm. Before, so the son's going to be born before he's old enough to know good and evil. So apparently there's this age of accountability, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that the the child at some point's got to stand on their own mm-hmm. uh, uh, until that point. Um, you know, the, I, best I can tell. They are under the authority of their parents. Well, they're under the authority of their parents. Yes. But they're also under the authority of faith of their parents, mm-hmm. right? Um, does that mean that the child has to uh, believe the gospel? Yes. Um, um, what happens if the child of the unbeliever dies? I don't know. Uh, we don't have passages that tell us that. No, specifically speaking. Um, yeah. We do have some passages that, that seem to indicate that the child of the believer is saved through the faith of the parent. Now, that's somewhat tenuous, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and so I'm not going to die on that hill, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I recognize that um, if you don't believe, you're not saved, that there's only one name through whom we're believed. Uh, but I also recognize that there's a lot of he and his whole family that were saved passages as well. So we try to fit this together. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. But, so, <clears throat> but also, if it, you know, in in what Paulie's Paul's saying here, we definitely know, and just what you just said, previous verses, that believing spouse has the opportunity to present, to bring before, no and, and if if they're separated. Those children don't have the opportunity yep, to no hear question. the gospel. In, in the Old Testament, uh, a son or a daughter was under the authority of their parents mm-hmm. uh, until, uh, let's talk about the son. Uh, the son was until uh, he was old enough to know good and evil. I mm-hmm. understand that to be 20 uh, years old. Um, and now he's got to stand on his own merits, on his own faith, right? Mm-hmm. He's been trained up in the way of the mm-hmm. Lord. Uh, the daughter was under the authority of the uh, of her father until mm-hmm. she was given to given in marriage. Uh, given in marriage, uh, and so it seems to me that that's how it went. So mm-hmm. there were to be no unbelievers in Israel, uh, but the child was to be raised up in the Lord, uh, and then they were their faith was to stand on their own merits. It seems mm-hmm. to me that's how uh, mm-hmm. it was working in the Old Testament. And Paul, being uh, steeped in the Old Testament, Old Testament theologian. Uh, wouldn't have had a different view of that. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. seems to be what's going on here. Mm-hmm. But now you have uh, an unbeliever being brought in. Um, now, in Israel, this wasn't to happen because mm-hmm. everybody was supposed to be believers and everybody was supposed to be following the Lord, and they were not to be intermarrying among the 
Yeah, the Gentile nations. Gentiles, mm-hmm. right? right. Uh, but now we've got this situation where the gospel has gone to the Gentiles, and it's possible then the church that you've got a believer, uh, someone who has come to faith and believed, married to an unbeliever. What do we do about that? Paul mm-hmm. says, stay with them. Yeah. Because the principle that's at work here is at your expense for their benefit, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so your desire for them is that they would come to know the Lord and that they would be saved right. as well and raise your children in a, uh, yeah. a, a household of, of faith. I, I, you know, for again, for our, our new listeners or our new uh, students to the Word, I think uh, typically what we bring into our individual theology here is that God wants me to be happy. And I've had people in the church who have said, well, I'm in Christ, I love the Lord, I want to serve the Lord, and I've got an unbelieving spouse, and I think God wants me to be happy, and I should find someone who loves Jesus too, and I'm going to leave my uh, lost husband or lost wife. And it creates all this, it's really antithetical to this yes. sacrificial love. Yeah, absolutely it is. And staying hooked up with this spouse and, and coming before the Lord, pleading with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Bring them to salvation, mm-hmm. and I think it's a huge testimony to our children. Absolutely, this I will not quit. Yep, I will not quit. Yeah. Endure to the endure end. To the yeah. Endure to the end. So, so in mm-hmm. chapter seven, verse fourteen, that's a difficult mm-hmm. verse. Okay, and we probably spent more time on it than we should. Sure. But we just want to say, look, when we come to the scriptures and we don't understand something, we tr- we you know, we do the best we can mm-hmm. to try to understand it. Sure, uh, but um, um, you know, but that's a tough one, right? That's it a is. tough verse. Uh, Verse 15, yet if the unbelieving leaves, let him leave, and the brother and sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. Now, you know, God has called us to peace, that end of verse 15, you can't separate from the first word of verse 16, which in Mm -hmm. the Greek is actually the second one. For how do you know, O wife, whether he will, uh, whether, whether you will save your husband, or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? In other words, um, uh, God has called us to peace, you know, to reconcile. Mm-hmm. His desire is for them, and so just as God pursues Israel always, so also you are to mm-hmm. pursue your spouse all, always in a desire to bring them back to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Verse seventeen. Only as the Lord has assigned to each one, God has called each in this manner, let him walk. And thus I direct in all the churches. Um, was a man called, uncircumcised, let him uh, not become, or uh, was he called was circumcised? circumcised, let him not mm-hmm. become uncircumcised. Uh, has anyone be, uh, been called uncircumcised, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. What matters, the thing that is of value, is is keeping the commands of the Lord. So let each man remain in the condition that he was called. If you are called as a slave, do not worry about it. If you're able to be free, that would be better, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, For he who was called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Mm -hmm. Likewise, he who was called while free is the Lord's slave. Now, don't miss this because he's going to tie all of this uh, free Mm -hmm. slave talk. He calls himself a bond slave always. Um, Chapter 7, at the end of this uh, chapter, verse 39, a wife is bound as long as her husband lives, but if her husband is dead, she is free. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So he's talking about this free and uh, slave, slave, right? Mm -hmm. And he begins chapter 9 with, uh, am I not free? Mm -hmm. Free from what? Well, uh, am I free from being a slave? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. In Roman culture, I'm free. Yes. But I'm the Lord's bondservant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I free from a wife? Yes. Why? So that I can serve the church. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah so, he's in the church, married so, to Christ. So if you're free, use that to become a bondservant of Christ. If you are a bondservant, uh, recognize that you have uh, freedom in the Lord and your mm-hmm. desire is mm-hmm. to... Right, so if you're a, a slave, don't worry about it. If you're able, become free. Why would you better be free uh, than to be a slave? Okay. Well, because the slave is required to do what the master, his earthly master, mm-hmm. demands of him. Mm-hmm. If he's free, he is free to be a servant, not to his earthly master, but to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh, and so that's uh, uh, you know that's important. Yeah. Same thing that goes. So what he's saying here with free. You know, a master servant in the human relations 
is the same thing with mm-hmm. the husband and wife. If mm-hmm. if a man is free from a wife, if he has no wife, or if a wife doesn't have a husband, then he or she is wholly able to devote themselves fully to the Lord, to serve mm-hmm. the Lord. If, however, they're married, then they have responsibilities and duties mm-hmm. uh, that they have to fulfill mm-hmm. to their husband and to their wife, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, you know, th- there's a limitation there, right? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Sure. I just a uh, question that I think our listeners might have because uh, you see this word come up a lot, and I think it's abused in the church because we so things are so subjective right. in the church today. Uh, you know, and we're trying to make it simple. This word "called," what what is he referencing there? It, it, called to uh, walk out your calling, um, because our, our our new listeners are going to call. The what are you talking about? Called phone call? <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, it's just so. Yeah. I don't want to take that for granted. They yeah. understand that. Well, uh, yeah. So, uh, and we use it in the in the church. You know, I was mm-hmm. called to be a pastor. I was called mm-hmm. to be this. Yes. No, no, no. You you were called. Into the body of Christ. In yes. other words, uh, how will uh, how did you hear? How did you believe unless mm-hmm. you heard? And how did you hear unless someone proclaimed the gospel? Someone called, you know, mm-hmm. spoke out, called the gospel. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so um, you were you heard the message and you believed the message, and so that's how you were yeah. so called it like, through hearing. The I mean, message. Uh, literally, the 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 king or. Uh, the Lord through the Spirit summoning, calling you, inviting you right. into His body. Yep. Okay. Yep. Right. Imitation actually is is uh, how it's also tr- translated. Uh, uh-huh. um, you, you get this in uh, in some parables. Uh, for example, this is back in uh, in uh, 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 in the, the Gospel of mm-hmm. Luke in Luke chapter fourteen. Mm. Uh, a certain man mm-hmm. was giving a big dinner, and yes. he called many. Yes. And they translate it invited. invited. So mm-hmm. you were invited into the mm-hmm. body of Christ. You were called into the body of Christ. You believed as a single one. It mm-hmm. remained there. Mm-hmm. You, belie- you believed as a circumcised, mm-hmm. uncircumcised, single, yes. married, whatever. The condition in which you were invited into the body of Christ. <clears throat> Operate from that. Yeah. Serve your spouse. Mm-hmm. Serve the body of Christ. Serve yeah. your master as you would serve mm-hmm. the Lord. Mm-hmm. So this is. Because I, really I didn't want to take teaching. away from yeah, the no, direction awful. here, but I just want yeah. I want people to understand because I just think it's abused. Yep. We use churchy terms and we really don't understand them. Right. Yeah. So, it's yeah. just a real That's simple all. term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let each were... man uh, remain with God in the condition that he was called. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give this opinion. Right. So mm-hmm. what's his opinion? Uh, his opinion is, what's the best way to serve the body of Christ mm-hmm. with a pure heart, right? Mm-hmm. With, that Your desires of your heart, the intentions mm-hmm. of your heart. I think that it is good in view of the present distress, person being Christ, uh, the, Christ is, uh, the church is being persecuted. Mm-hmm. It is good for a man to remain as he is. If you're bound to a wife, do not seek to be released. If you're released from a wife, do not seek a wife. But if he should marry, he's not sinned, right? Mm-hmm. Um Yet such will have trouble in this life, and I'm trying to spare you. Um, you know, you're going to have. Uh, I, I can't imagine living in the first century, um, and the the persecution that was beginning and, right. and growing <clears throat> on the church. You know, having your wife or kids, you know, hauled in front of you know, um, you know, some. It, Denounce your faith, or I, you know, persecute, kill. Well, just the just, brutality. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't just kill them. It was just how. Yeah. How can we be the extreme method? Yeah, yeah. And, and think about today. You know, uh, missions. Let's say you're a missionary and you're mm-hmm. married and you have a family and you're going into some mm-hmm. unreached people group and it's hostile. Let's say it's a, I don't know, some you know un- unbelievers and they they're killing Christians. Well. You're taking your wife and kids into the mm-hmm. crossfire. Mm-hmm. It's one thing to take yourself into there. But your whole family. It's quite another to take your yeah. whole family in there. Right? It's brutal. And so this is really practical mm-hmm. teaching. Mm-hmm. Now, is it a yes. command? Of the, no, it's Paul's opinion. He's saying, let right. me give you my opinion here. I think it's, yeah. it's wise to to uh, to not uh, do this. Uh, but if you marry, you've not sinned. If a virgin should marry, she's not sinned. Uh, yet uh, such uh, will have trouble in this life. I'm trying to spare you. But this I say, brethren. 
the time has shortened, so that from now on those who have wives should be as those who had none, and those who weep as those who did not weep, and those who rejoice as those who did not rejoice, and those who buy as those who did not possess, and those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it. For the form of this world is passing away. What's he saying? He's saying, look, uh, <clears throat> don't use give full use of your rights. Mm-hmm. Well, we just talk about rights all the time. I have the right to this and a right yeah. to that. Paul says, I have the right to do a whole bunch of stuff. Remember yep. how he begins this. Mm-hmm. Uh, all things are lawful for me. I have the right to do this. I have a right to do all kinds of stuff. But not all things are profitable right. for building up of the body of Christ. And so everything that you do in your life, you need to run through the grid of building up the body of Christ. However, if you have made a commitment, a covenant to a, a person, a marriage covenant, you fulfill that. Mm-hmm. And that is your primary means by which you put on display God's faithful covenant love to you, mm-hmm. right? even if that's an unbeliever. Um. <clears throat> So uh, verse 32, but I want you to be free from concern. The one who is married is concerned about the things of the Lord, but uh, that he may, uh, the one that's unmarried is concerned mm-hmm. about the things of the Lord, that he may please the Lord. But the one who's married, and this is what we've been saying mm-hmm. the whole of time, uh, is concerned about the things of the world, that he may please his wife. This, you've got a responsibility here, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to keep it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and his interests are divided. <clears throat> the woman who's unmarried, and as a virgin is concerned about the things of the Lord, that she may be both holy in body and in spirit. Uh, but the one who's married is concerned about the things of the world, that she may please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put a restraint upon you, uh, but to promote what is seemly. What you know, what is unseemly mm-hmm. would be you know be led away mm-hmm. by you know lust and all this right. stuff. Right. Uh, and to uh, secure undistracted devotion to the Lord. That's his goal. That's why he's I doing everything he's doing. Right? Of, yeah. Paul is single-focused, laser-focused, mm-hmm. building up the body of Christ. Everything that he's doing is about the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going into all kinds of places, being stoned and shipwrecked and beaten and persecuted and all that stuff. If he's taking a wife and kids along with him, oof, yeah. that's, that's, that's rough. Tough. Right? If any man thinks he is acting unbecomingly towards his virgin— uh, if she should be a full age, if he must, uh, if it must be so, let him do what he wishes. He does not to sin. Let her marry. In other words, uh, if a, a, a man has a daughter and and you know, and he's got to use his discernment here. Just recognize that when she attach it, when she becomes a wife, uh, she's not she she won't be wholly devoted to the Lord in the way that she could if she was mm-hmm. uh, single. But she's not sinning. Yeah. If she gets married, sure. Uh, You know, so uh, Paul's not contradicting anything other than saying in this present life, in this Mm -hmm. present condition, first century, you know, look, there's persecution, all kinds of stuff. But he who stands firm in his heart, being under no constraint, has the authority over his own will, has decided that in his own heart to keep his virgin daughter, he does well also. So Mm -hmm. give her Mm -hmm. in marriage, not give her in marriage, Mm -hmm. does well. So then uh, both he who gives his own virgin daughter uh, in marriage and uh, does well, and he who does not uh, give in marriage does even better. Why? Because she can hold your devote herself, herself to, to the Lord. Lord right? Yeah. A mm-hmm. wife uh, is bound as long as her husband lives. But if her husband uh, is asleep, or uh, literally that's what it is, her husband has fallen Dead. asleep, died, mm-hmm. uh, she is free to be married to whomever she wishes, only in the Lord. But in my opinion, uh, she is happier if she remains as she is, and I think uh, I also have the Spirit of God. In other words, back to the same principle, right? So mm-hmm. this principle is always building up the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've talked about uh, this some. Um, I, I think that um, <clears throat> in everything that we say and in everything that we do, we need to ask ourselves, is this building up the body of Christ or is it not? Is this the best way for mm-hmm. me to operate to build up the body of Christ? Mm-hmm. Um and that's not the same answer for every person, mm-hmm. right? You can right. have different answers for the same situation given a different person, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, this is what Paul's saying. Everything that he's doing, he's running through the grid of how does this affect the body of Christ? Mm-hmm. If I eat or drink here, how does that affect the body of mm-hmm. Christ? Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to say, look, if, if eating meat causes my brother to stumble, I'll never eat meat again. 
because my desire is to build up the body of Christ. Right. Now, I don't know that I'm willing to give up chicken fried steak, but I, I, you know, I'm not. <laughs> for us two, I'm two guys here at this yeah, table, that, that's a that, that's t- tough, wait man. a minute. That's a big sacrifice, wait right? Wait a minute. <clears throat> I, I, I've watched you eat. Yeah. I know. I know what I like to eat. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> bunch of farm boys you know, here. to get paid or to not get paid <laughs> yeah. in ministry. Yeah. Uh, it, does he have the right to get? Mm-hmm. Of course he does. Sure. The, the, the Old Testament, he's going to say, and we're looking mm-hmm. forward to the next uh, few chapters, he's yeah. going to say, of course he has the right. That don't muzzle an ox while it's threshing. And and God's mm-hmm. not just concerned about oxen, is he? No, this is talking about there's right. a principle at work here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that a, uh, that a laborer is worth his wage. That That's a principle that is throughout the, the scriptures. Mm-hmm. But Paul says, let me add another principle, uh, that if receiving a wage causes my brother to stumble, causes someone to question my motives. Right. Then I'll I'll build tents. Yeah. I'll do whatever it takes so that I can offer the gospel free of charge so that you won't think that I am doing what I'm doing for the money rather than for the building up of the body yeah. of Christ. And so boy that's a that's a struggle, right? That that right. that that be, that it, questions your motives, right? It, right. It, it forces us to evaluate our motives. And what's the best way to operate in this given condition? Should yeah. I take a wife, not take a wife, eat, not eat, mm-hmm. paid, not paid? And those are the three issues that Paul is going to yeah. deal with in the coming chapters. Oh, and he, uh, it's, this has been said as well. I mean, what does love require of me? Yes. Love drives. Love, you know, you've said this. I think it's very common for us in, in our church where we serve, you know, um, Belief drives behavior, and that belief yep. is locked in yep. to the love as defined by God, and that's that's got to be your motivation. Yep. But it costs. It does cost. It and costs. sometimes you miss it, right? Sometimes with we pure do. motives, sure. you make the wrong decision. Yeah. Um, I would rather. I would rather err on that side. Yes, I, I'd rather. <laughs> the other. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, look, I I don't want to make error ever. Sure. But given the uh, do the right thing, quote, right thing for the wrong reasons, I would mm-hmm. rather do the wrong thing for the right, right reason. I would rather err with pure motives sure. than with evil motives do the right, what people would say was the right thing. It's actually the wrong thing mm-hmm. because your motives right. are not good. And so right. Paul, in defending himself and instructing the Corinthian church on how to judge correctly, is really teaching them uh, that your motives mm. need to be pure, and your motive, the the number one driver, is does it build up the body of Christ, yeah. and that's our job. Okay. Well, thank you for today, and uh, again, I encourage our listeners to, you know, uh, check out the study guides, uh, the show notes, the daily devotionals. Again, we want to encourage everyone. To, to dig in, take ownership of their growth. We're not trying to just tell people what to believe. We want them to have the tools to walk through this. We want to encourage our pastors as well. And so, uh, but Sunday, other appointed times uh, where the church meets, gather together and be the church. Build up That's what we want to, we want to help equip people to build up the body. So thank you, David, for today. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's Word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.